Um, yeah, just before we get started, the first is it is unusually quiet down here today, so I don't think we'll have a problem being heard, but the wind can pick up as the day goes along. And um, so because it's a fairly large group, we just like to ask everybody to kind of stay together um, if you can and, and kind of huddle together like fish. Um, it'll be uh, easier to hear us. The other announcement is that we are on a beach and we are going to be on beaches today. We're going to have, we're going to visit two beaches today <coughs> that are, uh, have both public and private property on them. Now we're going to stay on public property at all times and part of this uh, safari is to show you how to do that and we do not um, expect well after yesterday maybe I said may, there may be uh, incidents with uh, homeowners uh, there have been uh, incidents of territorial territoriality on these beaches uh, in the past um, that's not why we're here we hope it doesn't happen we're here to see and learn about the beaches however if it does happen um, we ask that um, you tell them that you will get a ranger and to, that the ranger will be happy to answer their questions. So if anyone challenges you or confronts you about what you're doing, please just say, hey, how are you this morning? Isn't it a beautiful morning? I'm gonna go get an urban ranger and they'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, part of our job as urban rangers is to, is to sort of mediate or handle any disputes that come up in the places that we take people to. And uh, we'd like that to be our job and not have to have it be part of your job today so that you can really just enjoy the beaches. Um, so hopefully that entire warning will be completely superfluous, but um, certainly necessary uh, in the places that we're going to go. So, so the instructions are a little bit complicated, so if I could make sure everybody's listening and paying close attention, if you could come a little closer. Um, it's actually harder than we realized yesterday for groups to figure out how to stake out their public easement first. Um, so I'd like whoever has the trailblazing kit per group to pull out your easement map. Again, hot off the press from the California Coastal Commission. Now you'll notice that these maps are based on aerial photographs. Um, they're a little bit difficult to tell what property you're on unless you've been counting the houses from the access way, which luckily we did ahead of time. So right now we're in the seventh house in from the Geffen access way. We don't normally talk about who lives on these beaches, but it was so public, uh, there's no, no point in not talking about it, uh, that that was uh, next to David Geffen's property. And uh, David Geffen had dedicated the easement about 25 years ago. and. Um, basically fought pretty, uh, you know, also fierce legal battles. Uh, eventually lost those, settled with the state a couple of years ago, and finally opened up that access way. Okay, that was two summers ago. Mm -hmm. So this has, for the first time, really become a public beach with the public on it. If you go down that way, there's essentially no access. La Costa Beach, no access. Las Flores Beach, no access. Big Rock Beach, there's one access way that has been closed for six years because the county hasn't gotten around to repairing it and doesn't seem to have any plans to do so. And then the way beyond that, there's an access way. Okay, so we are a long ways. There's a huge stretch of beach that's several miles here without any access at all. Right now, we are on 22048. So find that on your map. 22048, does everybody see it? Yeah. Okay, so we're on a public access way right now. And if you look at the color coding for this easement, you'll see that it says easement extends from mean high tide line, inland, 25 feet. Now momentarily, Ranger Jenny and I are gonna model how you would measure and stake out this public easement, because that's what you're gonna do on your assigned easement. So the next easement, which group one will start at, and we will walk you down the beach and kind of help you make sure you're in the Drop right place. Drop you off at your easements. It's a few down. And so you'll start out at easement 22030. It's really important when you read the map to stake out your easement that you're very precise. I can't stress enough how important it is that you stay within the property lines of that individual property. Now the first five easements are in a, right in a row of each other, so that'll make it a little easier. Um, so the people on the edges of that block will have to be especially careful. But you'll notice that the color coding indicates slightly different parameters for each easement. Um, most of them are 25 feet inland, some are 50 feet inland, some of them have 10 feet privacy buffers for authorized development. So the privacy buffer takes precedence. So if you're heading 50 feet up the beach using your tape measure and you look like you're within 10 feet of authorized development, which is slightly ambiguous what that means, 
We don't think it includes gazebos no. or lawn chairs, but it's we the know deck. it's the deck. Yeah, so it includes okay. architectural structures, right. this sort of thing. That buffer zone takes precedence, so you just want to make sure you're following all of the stipulations for your particular easement. So your first job is to measure and stake out your easement. You'll use your tape measure provided, and then there are four stakes that you'll use to mark that top edge. We'll show you how in a moment. Can I add one thing? Mm -hmm. the, the one problem that we had yesterday that we hadn't anticipated is that in the heat and excitement of marking out the easement, people would sort of use a property next door um, that actually didn't have an easement. So like I said, it's less of a problem with this speech because so many we have adjacent easements that we didn't really have yesterday. But you want to be careful that when you're marking out that easement, you're not sort of bleeding into the other. We should emphasize that it is fun to use these beaches. It's not a lot of work, but because our safaris are really emphasizing public access, we want to be really clear not to violate public access ourselves while we're on the tour. But when you're down here, things are a little more relaxed. So the first job is to stake out your easement. The second is for you to um, practice your public behavior, your assigned public behavior on this piece of land, which doesn't have much practice with public behavior. So you're gonna help introduce the easement to public use. You're gonna be modeling your behavior and you are also going to be composing a tableau or a freeze frame view of your activity, which will be photographed on the way back as documentation.